All right, let's finish up um, section 3.1. Um, so I'm going to add a new definition, and then we're going to go back to the previous example. Um, so we just went, in the last video, we just talked about how the mean is influenced by like those really rich friends or those really poor friends, right? Someone bringing a ton of money or not. So it's influenced by, influenced by those extreme values. And so again, that's going back to the idea um, when that friend brought $555, the average jumped up to $69. So that's a really big average amount of money for lunch. So the way it works is, ooh, this didn't copy very well. Um, but the mean is about equal to the median um, for symmetric curves. So this is how we can decide if the curve makes a nice symmetric shape or not, meaning there's no really extreme values. It's the same on both sides. Um, when the median is smaller or the mean is bigger, um, we get this left skewed curve. And that's because we have those extreme values. That would be like the really, the friend bringing $555. So we have some extreme large values. That's what makes it right skewed. So that could be a birthday party with five-year-olds and then one ten-year-old's there, or that could be the friend bringing $555 to lunch. Um, and then the last one is left skewed when it's the opposite, when the mean is less than the median. So again, the mean is going to get pulled by these extreme values. So these are extreme small values. So if everyone brings $10 to lunch and then one friend brings $0, that's going to drag the mean down and that'll make a left skewed curve. So back to that intermediate example, um, we found that X bar was 35.1, this was in the previous example, and that the median was 36.5. You can go back and check. So based on these numbers, is it left skewed, right skewed, or neither? So neither might be symmetric. Um, so in this case, the, the mean um, we used X bar because it was a sample, so we can use mu or X bar, right, depending on if it's a sample or a population. So mu is for those populations. Um, but in this case, the mean is smaller than the median. 35.1 um, is less than 36. So that just means there's a few extreme values on the left side dragging the mean down. So we would call this left skewed. The skewness is basically whatever direction the mean is. So if the mean is smaller, it's left skewed. If the mean is bigger, it's right skewed. So let's just summarize this section with comparing the three measures. Um, so we call the mean a balancing point. for the data set. It balances the total distance on the left and right side. So that's why if one is far away, um, the mean might get dragged a little bit because there's more distance on this side. Yeah. Kind of a weird way to put it. But the main thing we want to take away from this is that the data value far away can affect the mean, so it is affected by extreme values. So we can have all this data really close together, and so then you would think the average is in the middle, right, right near the data values, but then someone comes along with a really small value, and that's going to pull the mean over a little by having that one value far away. That's the idea here. So the mean is also known as the fair share value. So if you think about calculating an average amount of money for friends going to lunch, fair share would be you all equally split the lunch even though you brought different amounts. And then we, use, we usually like the mean the most when the total is important. So that's important. Um, the median attempts to have half the numbers above and half below. Sorry, half below and half above, same thing. Um, and the median balances the number of values. 
So if one is far away and the rest are all over here, um, it doesn't really matter. It's going to have five numbers on the left side, five numbers on the right side. It's not going to get dragged like the median got dragged. It is not affected by extreme values. And then the mode isn't that common of a data um, to use, um, a statistic to use, sorry, not data. Um, it's just the thing that happens the most common, right? The most common occurrence. And it's not necessarily the center, it's just whatever shows up the most. Um, I would mostly use it for categorical since you can't calculate a mean or median of words. So let's just see what I'm talking about. So which statistic should I use? So which is the appropriate measure of center? Should I use mean, median, or mode for each of these? So if I'm interested in monthly income by a commission salesperson, um, that's numerical, so it's definitely mean or median. And so the question I ask myself is, is the total important? And I would think if you're looking at income, right, you would care about total income. So I would say the total is important here. Right, as a salesperson, right, your monthly income's interesting, right, but you're also interested in your total income. So total is important. So the mean would be the best measure here. How about central tendency of a class on an exam? So we were looking at test scores. Is the total important? Probably not of the class, right? Your individual total is important, but the class total is not important. That number doesn't mean anything. So I would say median is better for test scores. And then most common letter grade, letter grade is a category, categorical. So the only thing that makes sense is the mode. And that's section 3.1.